Hi and welcome to uh, my video, which is going to be my first impressions of the Axminster AC254TS table saw, which I have just acquired. Um, it's not a review, it's not an unboxing, it's not an assembly video. Um, didn't want to do that, as I'm sure you guys probably didn't want to see me actually kind of struggling to get this thing together so just my first impressions of this um so firstly for me this is a major upgrade so i'm coming from a job site saw which was a bosch gts 10 j which is a really good machine but um major major issue for me with the saw was it's a job site saw so little or no Dust collection, dust collection, absolutely shocking. Dust flies absolutely everywhere, irrespective of what I've tried to do. So for me, it was in a pretty small workshop, um, really imperative that I did something about that. So I've upgraded uh, to the Axminster. Um, and initially I am super happy. So let's give you a quick tour of uh, the machine. Here you can see it. it's um, currently kind of bench mounted. So it comes in different uh, varieties. You can put it uh, as I've got it on a bench. Um, you can have a stand or you can have a cabinet. I've actually ordered the cabinet um, as I will be moving out of my tiny little workshop to a slightly larger workshop. Um, uh, but I've just placed it for now uh, on this um, plinth that I'd made for my old table saw and luckily it actually fitted. Um, to me everything when you're in a small workshop has to be mobile so I've also as I say I've ordered the cabinet yet to arrive and I've also ordered the mobile base that comes with that so that I can move uh, the thing around and that's a good thing about it and this is one of the things that actually attracted me to the saw was that actually I didn't have to buy it all as one unit I could buy it in separate stages, so to speak. So um, I will kind of use the saw, see how I get on with it before I put it onto the cabinet. I may not even put it onto the cabinet in this workshop because this workshop is so tiny. I may just leave that until I move into my larger workshop, which is hopefully kind of end of April. Um, but I ordered it because we're currently in a pandemic and ordering stuff at the moment, as I'm sure you're all aware, is pretty tricky. So whilst it was available, I've, I've nabbed one um, in case it goes out of stock because stuff seems to come in and out of stock pretty quickly. So um, we've done that. So anyway, here it is. Um, as you can see, uh, it's quite a large uh, machine. It comes with the, the standard uh, table here. Um, and with it as standard is a right side extension and at the back this out feed table um, that comes as standard and you simply bolt those onto the side of uh, the, the main table. One little thing here which I think is quite a nice touch um, and I've never had before is the fact that the mitre slot here continues on into the outfeed table. So um, I'm going to have to rework most of my uh, jigs to fit on the new um, table saw. So that's actually quite nice, the fact that I've never had that capability so that the, the gauge can run all the way through to the outfeed table. So nice little touch, I think, there from Axminster as well. Um, and also as an upgrade for me, really nice to have a standard 19 mil uh, mitre slot there. The Bosch unfortunately had a proprietary one which made um, getting standard mitre gauge bars a bit of a pain in the arse so I actually had to make all of my own using HDPE uh, which worked well but it's nice to know that I can actually now get standard things that fit in there so that, that's a really good for my own personal thing that's a great um, a really good thing. Uh, nice solid fence you see nice that locks very well and I like the fact that you've got this auxiliary fence that can come either sort of this way for narrow cuts or will flip um, and give you a much taller fence if you need to and that's just secured with these butterfly uh, bolts here um, and sorry the butterfly kind of wing nuts that are here 
The only thing I would say that seems a wee bit strange that if you tighten this, it seems to lift this off the main table slightly. So I'm not sure whether that is meant to be the case. I don't think so. I'd rather not have a gap here. I don't think it's the end of the world, um, but that just seems to be a slight thing. And I don't know whether that's been machined slightly incorrectly here or not but I don't think it's gonna be a major issue. Um, the gauge here uh, was bang on, actually straight out of uh, the box, which was pretty remarkable. Um, you just fit the rail here with some uh, pre-attached pre bolts, and that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, the big upgrade for me is having a crown guard, and that is an excellent addition because having this attached to the um, dust extraction as well as dust extraction below has will make a massive difference in terms of keeping the dust down. Um, and on the few cuts that I've made with it so far, uh, virtually no dust coming out whatsoever, even with rubbishy old plywood and cheap MDF, which generally generates a lot of dust. And as we know, MDF dust is pretty nasty stuff. So the fact that everything seems to be sucked down the slot or out through here um, is a major, a major win. And I'm uh, pretty happy with that. Adjusting the height is done here, pretty straightforward. And adjusting the angle there, um, again, pretty straightforward. Not quite um, on point in terms of the markers out of the box but near as damn it uh, 90 degrees when it's on zero here and 45 when it's um uh the the saw is over there for a mitered cut however i don't really worry about that because i would always use one of these little fellas here to I just turn that on to check. Check it by what angle am I at anyway. So whether it fits on there or not, I'm not that bothered. And you can see that's currently got that at a right angle. So that was pretty easy, pretty much, uh, pretty fa fairly standard. A um, couple of things to note. The riving knife here, pretty easy to fit. Um, and actually, straight out of the box and tightening it was completely in line with the blade. Um, however, I would say one thing about when you're fitting that, um, it is pretty dark down in there. So I have one of these little fellas that wear around my head. Would it get you get one of those so you can see what's actually going on. However, there are some grub screws and there which allow you to adjust them but I cannot figure out how on earth you use those grub screws, grub screws to adjust the alignment. Luckily the alignment is okay. How they work is a complete mystery to me so I have not been able to figure that out so if anybody knows feel free to comment. Um, I'll probably get in touch with tech support at Axminster to try and figure that out because I'm sure at some point I will need to adjust that in terms of alignment, um, you know, as you start to use the saw uh, a lot more. So, hmm, bit weird that, um, but that's probably my um, stupidity at the moment. Um, I've got it attached to another Axminster uh, dust extraction, which is terrific. Use that on uh, my thickness saw, which it works like a charm. As you can see, it's a big 100 mil dust extraction. This is my only at the moment my only sort of slightly a slight gripe for want of a better word at the moment because I seem to be struggling here so as you can see the hose comes down here and then attaches to the outfeed here and you can see over here this is from the crown guard the problem is if I take this off this is a standard 
fit the space between the edge of here where the crown guard hose fits and the edge of the actual outfeed is probably only 20 mil. Um, and this is an absolutely standard dust extractor here and there's nowhere for it to grab onto. So what I've had to do is grab one of my good old Irwin clamps and clamp it on. So either I'm missing something, which is highly possible, or this doesn't feel like a great design. Um, I think I will call tech support and Axminster to try and figure that out. But I'm looking at thinking maybe I need to get some sort of adapter which just extends that so that that can really go over there. Now I know what they'll say is fix it with a Jubilee clip, but I hate Jubilee clips. They're a pain in the backside. And the whole point of everything in my workshop is I want it mobile. So as you can see, the dust extractor is on wheels, my bench is on wheels, everything is on wheels. I don't want to have to have things locked together. I want to be able to plug and play between different machines. So that seems to be a bit strange. Could be my ignorance, could be something I'm not getting, but I'll need to get to the bottom of that because you know when I move to um, my larger workshop, I will definitely um, not want to be fiddling around with Jubilee clips at all, unless someone knows of a quick release Jubilee clip. I would uh, really like one of those things. So actually having had the saw now uh, installed and kind of ready to go. One of the one things I would say to you, one of the most <laughs> sort of obvious features of this table saw is its weight. This is an absolute beast. Um, and it weighs, I think, best part of 90 kilos, which is getting on towards sort of 15 stone or so. So this is not something that you um, will be able to install and get going on your own. You can do most of it, but when it comes to lifting or tipping, it is this thing is absolutely like a dead weight. So um, when you get one, or if you're going to get one, just you are going to need some help in terms of uh, installing this. So I needed to have some help to actually get it up onto the uh, up onto this uh, pedestal. Um, when I fit the cabinet, I'm going to have to take it off, turn it over, reinstall the cabinet, etc. So that's going to be a bit of a pain, but um, that will be heavy. But so lovely, once it's up, it's it's OK. So let's take that off. The other thing that for me is a huge upgrade is the volume of the saw. Um, it's an induction motor um, compared to just the standard one I had on the, the Bosch. Um, and is massively, massively quieter. So let's actually have a, a look at the saw in action or just to, to get, give you a sense of how, um, how noisy or quiet it is depending on your uh, point of view. So um, all plugged in and ready to go. The other thing which I wasn't aware of before I bought it, which I think is a, a terrific little uh, feature, which I like, which actually completely flummoxed me, is this safety switch here, which you have to pull out, turn to release before you can uh, turn the machine on. So I actually really like that. So I was spent about a minute pressing this with thinking, what on earth is going on? Have I got a fuse gone in the plug or something really stupid without thinking it of course didn't read the manual um, this little fella you turn and you release and now I can use the machine so you start obviously with this you can stop with this which means you can restart again or you can stop the machine with this which means that that then becomes disabled so it's up to you I think um, generally as I'm pretty scared of table saws and <laughs> uh, I think I'll probably start to use 
this as my stop. But so like if I press the start, you'll get a sense of uh, the volume of the machine. <laughs> So you can hear that, that is not too bad at all, compared to what I had before, massive, massive improvement over the Bosch, um, and I think shouldn't be too annoying to uh, my neighbours. So as I said, I can turn off here, or I can turn off, let's turn that off, that allows me to turn that back on, whereas if I turn off with that, that now the green switch, the on switch now essentially becomes disabled. So overall my impressions are um, very very positive. For me this is a major upgrade. Um, like all things in life it's relative, it depends where you're coming from. If you're an experienced woodworker, been using big machines for many years, this is probably a bit of a downgrade. But for me, I'm an amateur hobby, hobby kind of guy, very new to woodworking, only been doing it 18 months or so, um, still learning my way. Um, this is a huge upgrade and I think will suit me for many, many years to come. So, um, hope you like it. Any questions uh, you have about it, pop them in the comments and I will try and answer them. Thanks for watching. Take care.